our students and the staff affiliated with the Morehouse Memory Movement Memory and Justice Initiative had the, the pleasure uh, and the honor of visiting Hilton Head, South Carolina. And while there we met a beautiful, beautiful woman, Ms. Mrs. Josephine Wright. You see her picture projected here. She made, a, she made an impact on every single one of us who took that journey. And we were all floored when she, dro she drove up, 94 years old, she drove up with her daughter sitting beside her in the passenger seat and her granddaughter in the back, but she wheeled the car. And she got out, just a beautiful spirit, a small woman in stature, but a big spirit. And she is the woman you've read about over the last year who was battling against developers who sued her for, they say, encroaching on land that we're developing, and we know that was not true. Everything you've heard here from the last panel and others, uh, the focus on really the importance of reclaiming, reclamation. She was at the forefront of that battle for her family, holding on to the ancestral land, and she became a model for all of us. Councilman Michael Julian Bond, would you come to the mic, please? Thank you, Dr. Myrick. Good evening, everyone. Oh, it is a good evening. Good evening, everybody. And uh, to this wonderful family, we want to say welcome to Atlanta. And uh, we just wanted to let you know that we have been following the, the struggle really for years. A, a dear friend of mine, uh, a Morehouse graduate attorney, Hakeem Hilliard, has worked uh, with some of the indigenous Kijipin down in Savannah, Georgia. So this is something that has been, as we all know from attending the conference, has taken place over decades. But we want to stop and honor uh, your ancestor. We want to honor the, the great work that she did. And so I am here today representing our mayor, the Honorable Andre Dickens, our city council president, and all 15 members of the Atlanta City Council with the highest award that the city can, pr can present a proclamation. And I'll read it in pertinent part. It says, whereas the Atlanta City Council is pleased to join the family, friends, loved ones in celebrating the extraordinary life of Ms. Josephine Wright, a pillar of strength, wisdom, and compassion in the community. Whereas Josephine Wright was born on November the 4th, 1929, and in, in uh, Clifford, oh, I'm sorry, as the daughter of Clifford and Goldie Harris, graced this world with her presence and, and embarked upon a journey marked by resilience, devotion and unwavering dedication to her family, her community, and in the pursuit of justice. Whereas as a lifelong advocate for civil rights and social justice, Josephine fearlessly confronted the real estate developers encroaching upon her family's ancestral land in Hilton Head, embodying the spirit of resilience, determination, and an unwavering commitment to her heritage and community. And whereas Josephine Wright is the founding director of two Samuel D. Wright daycare centers in Brooklyn and was dedicated public servant to, in the New York violations uh, court system and increased her dedication in re returning and tutoring young and uh, young people serving in the community. And whereas she is a cherished member of the Mount Calvary Baptist Church on Hilton Head Island in South Carolina for almost three decades contributed to the musical talents teaching prowess and seamstress skills to enriching the spiritual and cultural tapestry of the congregation. Whereas Miss Josephine Wright, affectionately known as Joe, Grandma, Great Grandma, Aunt Joe, Grandma Joe, and Mommy, leaves behind a legacy of love, integrity, unwavering courage that will continue to inspire and uplift us all. Now therefore we, the members of the council, have the city of the city of Atlanta hereby proclaim this day as honor of Miss Josephine Wright Day in our city. In witness thereof, I have set my hand and it calls the seal of the city of Atlanta to be here and to affix. Congratulations.
We're going to pause for a minute and do what the city council does best, and that's take a picture. We'll take a quick picture. Yes, please. One of the titans that Morehouse produced for the world is former congressman, South Carolina congressman, Bukari Sellers. Yes, yes. Who's, who has been such an angel to our family, the family of Josephine Wright. Want to thank him for his guidance and his care and his humor, his influence, his passion. Yes. Yeah, his dedication to my grandmother was and is unmatched. I had the pleasure of meeting him once when he drove the two hours from Charleston to Hilton Head just to take us out to lunch, just to hold her hand and check in with her and see what she needed. He is an angel. We are so grateful for him. To my sister Cherise, who's here. That was grandma's right hand woman. Her assistant. She kept all the appointments, all of the interviews, all the appearances, the handshakes, the baby kissing and the hugs. She kept her organized. Thank you so much. I would say she drove her around, but that's not true because grandma drove until the very end at 94 years old. Okay, we can all only hope to be as, as lucky and healthy and with it as she was at 94. Yeah. Woo, but we're here to talk about Grandma Josephine. As you see, what a woman. What a woman. I, I don't have an extensive list, but I have a short list of everything she taught herself how to do. She taught herself how to play the piano, how to sew, how to cook, how to lay hair how to dig, how to renovate and build and paint just a few years ago, a few years ago, not a decade, not two, just a few years ago, she renovated her entire primary bedroom and bathroom from wall to wall, from floor to ceiling by herself. The only thing she needed help with was the electrical part, thank God. <laughs> she didn't do that herself. For those of you who may not be familiar with her story, I know you heard just a, a snippet of it in the introductions, but um, about 30 years ago, my grandmother and my late grandfather, a Galagichi descendant, Samuel D. Wright, moved to Hilton Head to retire to our family's land on Hilton Head Island. Myself, my siblings, and my cousins grew up visiting them there. My mother, her siblings and cousins grew up visiting their grandparents there. My grandfather, his siblings and cousins grew up visiting family members there. My great grandparents, my great great grandparents, my great 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 grandparents, you get the point, all the way back to the late 18th century has called Hilton Head Island home. They were born there. They tilled the land, they folded their blood, sweat, and tears into that soil. Many of them are buried there. And in the surrounding islands and, and the mainland in Beaufort County, that is our home. Fast forward to the present, after a century of land grabs and displacement in the name of commercial expansion and tourism, much of which has happened in the last few decades, 
uh, our family's land and the land of our cousins all across the island and in many of the islands have dwindled down on Hilton Head, uh, the Gullah slash Geechee. I love that, by the way. Thank you for that. I believe it. Uh, the Gullah Geechee owned land went from 95% owned on Hilton Head Island to 5% today. In late 2022, on the usually sleepy Jonesville Road, Grandma Josephine uh, woke up to the crashing of 29 acres of trees being cleared around her house with no word or no notice. A once lush forest that I was always too scared to play near, okay, was being torn down with the intention of being replaced by a 170 unit townhome community that was to encircle our family's last bit of land. But that's not exactly where our struggles began. The confusion, yes, because we didn't know that that development was being constructed. But our struggles began when the development company, who shall not be named, and that was grandma's idea, yeah, it was. to never say their names, never, never. okay? When the development company decided to harass her at 93 years old off of her 1.18 acres of land by threatening suit if she didn't do three things. One, remove a portion of her back porch. Two, remove a decrepit shed in her far backyard. And three, remove the remains, the cement remains of an old satellite dish that used to live in her front yard. And uh, let me digress for a second, y'all. Grandma was always up on technology, okay? She taught herself how to type also. She taught her, she, she decided to take computer classes in the 80s and 90s when she knew that computers were about to be the wave. She taught herself how to program computers and fix them. And around 2007, 2008, she called me once and the phone just hung up quickly. I called her back. I said, Grandma, did you just call me? She said, oh, I was just setting up my new iPhone. <laughs> Have you heard of it? I wouldn't get one until another 10 years, but whatever. That gigantic satellite dish in the 90s had hundreds of channels. It looked like a space station. It took a few minutes to move to get to the next cluster of channels. I only cared about, at the time, the Cartoon Network and the Game Show Network, which were, and that's true, which they weren't on normal cable TV yet. So this is one of the multitude of reasons why I loved spending summers with her. Sadly, today and too often in the past, so many black and brown and lower income residents have been intimidated by the letterhead that they received that day. They let these Goliaths trample all over them, but not Josephine Wright. She took one look at them and said, oh, heck no. She didn't say hell because she didn't curse. <laughs> we would have. Their egregious suit claimed that we were encroaching on their property, and I have to read this, thus depriving them of its full use and enjoyment and causing significant delays in development from our physical invasion. I can't make this up. This is on public record straight from their suit. We, who have been there for generations, we're now a burden to them on their new property. The funny thing about that delay in development is after our story was picked up by the local newspaper, the Island Packet, and then the NBC affiliate, WSAV in Savannah, the town of Hilton Head stood by our side and issued a writ of construction. They could not move on to the second phase of their development, which was the above ground phase, until this suit was handled and taken care of. And to this day, there, is, there has been no construction above ground there. Right. I sincerely hope that this sets a precedent for legislatures around the country, that they can stand with the little guy and help them fight this behavior instead of turning a blind eye when it happens. Because of that writ, even though the trees were cleared and the roads were paved behind her house, y'all, they put that road just as close as they could get away with, she was still able to transition in that peacefully tranquil neighborhood that she's called home for almost 30 years. 
that entire 170 unit townhome community could be running right now had those greedy, spineless, grandmotherless fools right. not decided, had they not decided to mess with her, had they just left her alone. I hope a few people lost their jobs after that major fumble. That was a football reference for the Super Bowl coming up. My husband told me not to say go Taylor, so I won't. So where are we today? Today, thanks to over 7,000 generous donations, countless shares, likes, and comments, we've raised over $367,000 in our GoFundMe. With that, we've started the Josephine Wright Foundation, a 501c3 nonprofit that's dedicated to supporting education, scholarships for the underprivileged students, and supporting and guiding other families who are suffering through land grab atrocities in the Low Country and beyond. And the lawsuit has been settled for an undisclosed amount. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, and did I mention that Tyler Perry is building a house for my grandmother? He is continuing that pledge. We can't move forward without acknowledging that angel and the work that he's done to position himself to be able to be a blessing among the lives of so many. And my family is a recipient of that grace. What would the world look like if everyone was so bountiful? We are so humbled and so grateful and Jesus, she was so excited for that home. She was. <sighs> Grandma Josephine may not have been able to build homes for strangers like Mr. Perry, but the legacy she leaves behind is one of true service. She lived for service. She served her family. She served the Mount Calvary Missionary Baptist Church faithfully for almost 30 years. She sat in the front row. She stood in for the music director when he called out. She sewed the, the robes for the children's choir. One summer when I was there, her house was full of white fabric. She said, the, the kids need robes and I will do it. Well, she volunteered to both of us. I remember seeing the one that I made, it was the lopsided one, and she put me on iron duty after that. <laughs> she saw what needed to be done, and she stepped up without breaking a sweat, without complaining, without grumbling, and that's how she lived. And it is no surprise, it is no surprise that her transition was as graceful as her living. I have no doubt that she is shining her light on the other side of the sunrise right now. And thank you so much for this opportunity to continue shining her light on this side as well. Amen. So on behalf of the Josephine Wright family, I want to say thank you all. I want to say God bless you all and be well. Thank you. Thank you for listening.